From 1925 until 1986, there was only one edgewise slot. It was invented by um, Edward Engel with the intention of providing bodily control throughout orthodontic treatment. Within those 60 or more years, it was produced in different sizes and zero, zero, and a whole variety of different talk and tip prescriptions. But still, to this day, it enforces bodily tooth movement during mesiodistal translation using continuous archwires, and this was precisely what Angle intended. In 1986, a revolutionary edgewise archwire slot was invented by Peter C. Kesling. It was designed to permit initial crown movement in one direction with tipping, while providing anchorage in the other, followed by bodily control for finishing. Such variable control is possible with a continuous archwire, either round or rectangular. After 20 years of clinical excellence around the world, the manner in which the Kesling slot functions to reach these goals is still unappreciated and misunderstood by those who have never used it. The following demonstration will clearly show how a 0.022 inch Kesling archwire slot can first effectively increase in size up to 0.028 inches and subsequently reduce again to 0.022 inches. Initial tooth movement by tipping and very light forces requires minimal anchorage and meanwhile the increase in archwire slot size prevents binding, facilitates stepping up in archwire sizes and provides maximum patient comfort. Then, the return back to 0.022 inches produces the desired tip and torque inclinations more physiologically and precisely than is possible with any conventional angle slot. At the beginning of the finishing stage of treatment, the super elastic wires are threaded through the deep tunnels. In this demonstration, we're threading from the mesial through the tunnels of the right central incisors. Nickel titanium 0.014 inches is used. The full size stainless steel archwire is then engaged in each archwire slot and retained with conventional elastomeric ligatures. The upper interiors are tipped distally, caused by retraction during space closure and or the correction of class II interarch relationships. The opening of anterior overbites with Kesling slots also results in distal crown inclinations, even in non-extraction cases. This is desired, it's expected, and it facilitates opening of deep bites with light forces. Of course, the distal tipping of anterior teeth also causes these archwire slots to increase vertically in size, up to 0.028 inches. This makes it very easy to engage full-size rectangular archwires. Even large torque discrepancies of up to 15 degrees in either direction can be engaged without any deflection. Within six to nine months, the nickel titanium wires have uprighted and torqued all teeth against the passive full-size steel arch wires. This 10 times size model tip edge plus bracket demonstrates how easily a 0.0215 inch times 0.028 inch stainless steel rectangular arch can be accommodated and how the vertical arch wire space increases as the tooth tips. The deep tunnel lies lingual to the arch wire slot. It is threaded by a 0.014 inch nickel titanium wire represented here by a closed coil spring. First, an ordinary plastic dish is filled with plastic pellets. This will then be placed on top of a common vibrator as used when pouring impressions. Both of these are fitted into a special fixture which holds both the rectangular wire and the deep tunnel wire. Now, as we activate the vibrator, the incisal rods are able to move through the plastic pellets to simulate the uprighting and torquing that will occur in the mouth. A close-up view clearly shows the Kesling slot in action. As the tooth uprights, the flat finishing surfaces come into full contact with the upper and lower surfaces of the rectangular arch wire. The nickel titanium wire can be seen in the deep tunnel as it powers the uprighting. Note that the edgewise arch wire is not deflected, it remains undisturbed and provides maximum vertical and horizontal control.
Of course, patient comfort is maximised and the uprighting forces are extremely light, being generated solely by the nickel-titanium wire. When viewing the fixture from the side, it is possible to appreciate how the unique arch wire slot can automatically translate second order forces into third order torque movements. These teeth can be torqued simultaneously in either direction without removing or readjusting the main rectangular arch wire. Note in this demonstration, as is so often the need in the mouth, the lateral incisor root is torqued labially while the central incisor is torqued palatally. Yet, all the while, the rectangular arch wire is not flexed, it remains passive. Unlike torque forces delivered with an ordinary angle arch wire slot, there are no equal and opposite reciprocal forces applied to the adjacent teeth. I honestly believe that the concepts behind the Kesling slot and the plus bracket are just light years ahead of any other straight wire appliance system.